Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will show you how to easily and efficiently send emails in ASP.NET Core using the Fluent Email Library. Fluent Email is a popular open source library for sending emails from .NET applications. It provides an easy to use Fluent interface. That means we can easily create an email message, add recipients, set the subject, etc. by chaining methods. Furthermore, we can define email templates using popular markup syntaxes like Razor or Liquid templates and reuse them. In this video, you will see how to do that and some other things as well. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. I have already prepared a web API project and to use Fluent Email in it, the first step is to add required Nugget packages. Fluent Email provides a bunch of Nugget packages with different functionalities. That said, I will add a couple of packages that provide the basic functionalities for sending an email. The first one is the Fluent Email.core package, and it provides all the basic functionalities we need to send emails. Also, I will use the Fluent Email.smtp package to send emails using an SMTP server. Ok, after the installation, the next step is configuring the Fluent Email services. Now, before I continue, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C Sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. Ok, let's continue. And I will create a new class first, named Fluent Email Extensions. This class must be static because I will create a new extension method here. So let's add that method, name it Add Fluent Email, extend the iServiceCollection interface with the parameter name services, and Add one more parameter of the configuration manager type named configuration. Inside the method, I will extract the email settings from my app config file using the configuration.getSection method and provide the section name as an argument. Then I need a default from email variable and we'll extract that from the email settings section with the proper key provided. Also, I need the values for the host and port, which as you can see, must be of the integer type. Finally, I will use the services parameter and call the add fluent email method to register the fluent email services. And for that, I have to provide a default from email value. Also, I will call the add SMTP sender method and provide host and port arguments. Now, one important fact here. I will test this functionality using the local tool named SMTP for dev because using a real email provider like Gmail would take a bit more to create app passwords, etc. But if you want to see how to enable Gmail, for example, to be able to send emails to it, you can watch my video where I use the MailKit library to send emails to Gmail. The link will be in the description below. This means if you want to use this implementation to send emails to Gmail, all you have to do is provide two more arguments for the add SMTP sender method, the username and the app password. Now we can call this extension method from the program class. So let's use builder.services property and call the add fluent email method, the one I just created, and provide a required configuration argument. Great. Next, let's create an email service to take care of the email sending functionality. First, I will create a new interface named iEmailService. I will also add a single send member here that accepts email metadata as a parameter. You can see the metadata class is already prepared with a few properties needed for sending emails. Next, I need an email service class. 
So let's add it and add the name here. It will inherit from the previous interface and I will implement the interface right away. Now, I want to inject the iFluent email interface which provides the functionality to send emails. Of course, I will do that using the constructor injection. After that, I need to make my send method async and provide the implementation by awaiting several chain methods. First, I will use the fluent email field to call the to method and provide the address of the receiver. Then I need a subject. Also, I need a body. And finally, let's send the message. You see how easy it is to use the fluent logic here. Finally, I have to register my email service as a scoped service in the program class. It's worth noting that some of the Fluent Email Library services are scoped and hence I need to add the email service either as a scoped or transient service. With this, my email service is ready. Now, as you can see, I have a controller prepared. And I will just add the code here to inject my email service and send the email. You see, inside the get action, I am preparing my metadata and using the email service to send the email. That's all it takes. Now, let's set up the SMTP for dev tool to test the sending email functionality. First, I will install the tool globally. And after the installation, I only have to run the server using a single command. You can see the tool is listening on localhost 5000 port 25. Now, let's run the app. It will start the Swagger UI and I can send the first request. So, I got a 200 OK response, which means the email was sent successfully. And let's check that out. I need to navigate to HTTP localhost 5000. And here, you can see the email is generated. You see the subject and the body of the email. Awesome, everything is working great. As you saw with SMTP Sender, Fluent Email allows us to easily plug in an email sending provider and use that for sending emails. Regardless of the sender that we configure, it always uses the same core library methods for sending emails. A few email senders that are available as official libraries are SMTP Sender, which I already used, Mailgun Sender, SendGrid Sender, MailTrap Sender, and mail kit sender. For all of those, we just need to install the required Nugget packages. Apart from these, there are plenty of open source email senders available which are compatible with Fluent Email. Ok, let's continue our work here and implement some templates for our emails. For that, I will use the Razor provider. So, first, I have prepared the template file. And as you can see, it is a simple CSHTML file with some Razor syntax inside it. Now, I need one more package here. So, let's use the package manager and install the fluentemail.razor package. Next, I have to register the services from a new package. And for that, I will modify my extension class. All I have to do is to change the call to the add raise renderer method. Nothing more than that. Ok, with this done, let's modify the service interface with another member. The name will be send using template and it will accept an email metadata parameter, a user parameter and also a file name of the template file. That's all I need here and I can implement this new member in my service class. So, let's implement the missing member, make the method async, and add the same code we already used with an addition of calling the using template from file method with two required arguments, the template file and the model, in this case, my user model. 
Great. Lastly, let's prepare the controller. In this new action, I prepare my user model and email metadata, get the full path of the template file, and send the email. Ok, just one more thing. For all this to work, I need to modify the project file by adding a new property here. That's all. I can run the app now and test this second request. It is successful, so let's check the server. And as you can see, I have a new email generated here. You can see it is using a template file I have prepared. Great stuff. Now, let's see how we can attach files to our email. So again, I need a new interface member. It will return task. I will name it send with attachment. And it will accept an email metadata parameter. Also, let's implement this member inside the service class. Again, this code is almost the same as the previous one, just with an addition of calling the attach from file name method. This method works with files that we already have saved on disk. But if you want to attach file sent by the users, you can use the attach method and populate the attachment model which is provided by the Fluent Email package. You have to extract the files from the request body, slightly modify the email metadata model, and create a service method to extract the stream and populate the attachment model. Of course, there are multiple ways for you to do that, but if you need help with that, you can always check the source code. The implementation will be there. Finally, I have to modify the controller. As usual, I prepare the metadata object and use it with the newly created method to send an email with the attachment. Ok, let's test this. Let's send the third request and after it is completed, let's check the server. You can see a new email and also an attached file. Great, this works as well. Finally, I will show you how to send multiple emails with a single request. To do that, Let's again modify the interface first. This time, I use the list of email metadata as a parameter. Next, in the services class, I have to inject a new email factory service. Let's name the field Fluent Email Factory and let's add it inside the constructor. Of course, I have to implement a missing method here. As you can see, it is almost the same implementation, just this time I am using the factory service and the create method to create the factory. The rest of the methods are the same. Finally, I need a new action in the controller. So I have a list of users and for each user I create metadata objects and store them inside the email's metadata collection. After that, I simply use the method I just created to send multiple emails. As usual, let's run the app now, send a new request, and check the server. And there you go, you can see two new emails. Great stuff! As you saw, it's pretty easy to use Fluent Email to send emails from an ASP.NET Core Web API application. Additionally, I've shown you the different email senders and template renderers that it supports. Finally, we looked at adding attachments to emails and sending multiple emails as well. If you liked the video and found it useful, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.